Okay, so here I am in Vienna on the Living Daylights location hunt and we're currently in the Palais Schwarzenberg which is, uh, I believe, the hotel that Bond and Cara check into when they first get to Vienna um, and the little kind of gardens that they uh, ride through in the horse and cart. So you can see in the background there this huge, lovely building over there which is amazing. Now the grounds are actually huge so I don't think this is the horse and cart section, I think that's the other side of the building. Um, so we'll go check that out now, lovely. So I got it wrong. That's actually the Belvedere Palace, which isn't the hotel. Um, and the place where Bon and Cara check into is at the other end of this park. So I'm just going to head there. But I thought you might want to have a look because it's a pretty grand building anyway. It's pretty nice. So mission failed, unfortunately. I've just been uh, walking around the gardens and every gate into the Palais Schwarzenberg was closed uh, and locked. And then I've just walked for ages around the whole perimeter of the park and found one little entrance to this sort of old looking scabby car park with nothing really in it. And I've just found out that apparently the hotel is now closed. There was going to be some res renovations back in 2009, I think it was. Um, and then uh, I was just like, have I even got the right place? So I checked on TripAdvisor and it is the right place apparently, but it's been closed down. So there it is. So that is... As far as I can tell, Bond and Cara's hotel still looks pretty grand, but I've just poked my head through the through the window and uh, everything looks pretty closed up and, uh, and not in use. What a shame. I was really looking forward to that, but uh, hey-ho, onward and upward. So here is the, uh, what once was the entrance to the hotel, all boarded up and looking a bit rubbish. And there we go. So as you might be aware by my surroundings, I've entered the amusement park from uh, The Living Daylights and I'm just looking around at all the rides Bond and Cara went on and I can spot the one everyone's going to recognise right here. Check it out. Now also, I know it was supposed to be filmed on a set, but this little cafe here looks very much like the one where Saunders gets chopped by the doors. Let's check it out. So I'm having a little walk around and a wander and a look at the different rides. I'm trying to locate all the rides and stuff that Bond and Cara would have, uh, would have gone on if they're still here. Highly unlikely, but hey ho. Um, now there's a couple of roller coasters here. Um, now the cars look different, but I'm, I'm hoping, I'm guessing it might be one of these. Um, the cars they were in were like purpley colour with like red eyes on. And these look different, but let's check it out anyway. I thought I'd just hit the mother load. I was really excited. And I suppose the, the, the chances of any of those old rides being here uh, this this long, much longer later um, is really slim. But I just saw the haunted house and I thought I'd seen the big skeleton that jumps out and goes, Woo! but it's not him. But this is a close approximation. Here he is. So I'm guessing that's like the 2015 version of the, uh, of the scary skeletons. Okay, so we've had a look around the park. Now it's time to go on the big wheel. All right. So we're just in line to get tickets for the wheel. Here's what it looks like.
So the little part before you board the actual wheel itself is kind of like Scaramanga's funhouse. There's just mirrors everywhere. It's really crazy. Weird. So Bond's car was number 10. Chances are we won't be getting on that one because uh, there's so many people waiting, but here it comes now. So I had a little plan to stop the wheel when we get to the top. So I can do a bit of romance with the missus, but it's not really conducive. A little bit awkward. guessing before they built this huge kind of entrance building. <laughs> There's a shot of Saunders and I imagine kind of coming from the top down and I imagine he's down there somewhere. Okay, so that's Prater Park done. There's the wheel behind me. The, uh, the tricky thing about something like this is the kind of layouts and everything are so, so different to what you see on the film. So it's really difficult to kind of find anything really, um, except I think I got the one angle where uh, Saunders would have been stood as they go up on the wheel and you look down and you see Nikos come up behind him with the balloons. But I was trying to find Timothy's gate that he jumps over and all that kind of stuff. Can't find anything that looks remotely like it. So I'm guessing either that was done on a stage or it was here and it's now been uh, kind of removed. Okay, so on to the next location. Okay, so here I am at the last of the Vienna locations that I'm gonna make. And I just wanna turn the camera around 
and see if you recognize this place. That little shop there. Any idea what that would have been? That was the little shop that Bond and Saunders go into to uh, set up their little sniper post. They walk from across the road over here into the shop and then I imagine one of these windows was their viewpoint. So I'm going to cross the road so you can see it. So there it is and it's a shame it's closed because apparently there's like a little shrine to the living daylights in the window. But I guess that would have been one of those windows above the shop would have been their vantage point, their little sniper nest. And there it is. How cool is that? Now more importantly, across the road from there is obviously the uh, the concert hall where all the action with Cara goes down. So let's go and take a look at that. Oh, exciting. And here it is. Ah. So first things first, that window up there is Cara's little sniping point. Let's zoom in on it. That's the window where Bond sees her. How cool is that? It's known as the Borg Sulper Music Hall, this place. So there's that, and then there's the front door after he shoots the gun and she comes out with the coat draped over her arm. Let's go and check that out. It's a little closer. She comes out of here while Koskov's guards are kind of running around all confused. She comes out of that door, around the corner, and there's a little another angle of her window up there. The girl with the cello. There it is. So if I walk along here, we're going to find Koskov's window, where he climbs out of the uh, of the toilets there. So let's check it out. Now I must say it looks a lot smaller in the movie. It's actually quite a sizable window. But there it is, that is the window that Koskov climbed out of. And then he comes along here and there was some kind of van parked and he kind of catches his breath behind it. That would have been parked roughly here. And then if you look over here, that yellow building opposite, that's obviously the shop. And I imagine that balcony is where, they, uh, where the cameras were set up to, to kind of get those shots across the road. And there it is. Pigs, borscht, cake, there must be another way. Okay, so that's the last of the Vienna locations. That's sadly all I got time for on this trip. Uh, but I've covered the main ones that I really wanted to get to, the Ferris wheel and obviously the, uh, the kind of concert hall behind me as well there and you can see Cara's window right in the background there which I'm really really excited about. Okay guys thanks for joining me and uh, I'll see you soon.